Not a lot of people like the Mavericks right now. They are the most disappointing team in the NBA. Is this unraveling on the Mavericks right now? This team is sliding out of the playoffs. A lot of people might say that it's Kyrie Irving's fault. That's not true. Luca, it is you. It kind of looks like a bit of a cluster. <laughs> They've got bigger, bigger issues here with Luca on this roster long term. I've never seen this guy look this down. He spent so much time bigger than the rest. What point are we actually going to start to point the finger at Luca? His poor leadership skills. I don't like what I've been seeing from Luca. He looks depressed. Why haven't they been more successful in Dallas? Nash walked out the door. Brunson walked out the door. You went from knocking on the door of a conference finals to not even potentially being in the play in. Right. That is a catastrophe. We are not supposed to be having these types of conversations. We are not supposed to be questioning whether or not Luka Doncic has the leadership ability to get it done or if the Dallas Mavericks front office is ruining his young career. And after a Western Conference Finals appearance just last season, we were certainly not supposed to end this season questioning whether or not Luka Doncic will send shockwaves throughout the NBA and request a trade. So what's up guys, Mike here. And if you have not heard Bleacher Report this very morning, one hour ago, just said Luka Doncic might be requesting a trade in 2024. That is how dire this Dallas Mavericks situation has gotten. After a trade for Kyrie Irving, combining him with one of the greatest young players in the NBA in Luka Doncic, and also after making the Western Conference Finals last season, if Kyrie Irving leaves in this offseason, which it's looking like he very well might, this could be an absolute disaster. Especially because Luka Doncic is without a doubt one of the greatest young players the NBA has ever seen. And to show you what I mean here, let's take a look at a list of every single player in NBA history who averaged at least 27 points, eight assists, and eight rebounds per game in their first five seasons. As you may notice, this list does not include Michael Jordan, LeBron, Magic, Bird, Duncan, Shaq, Kareem, Wilt, etc. It has one name, Luka Doncic. And so when you combine this with the fact that Luka has also been named to the All-NBA First Team three times in his first four seasons, there is certainly a case to be made here that on paper, Luka Doncic is the greatest individual talent at this young of an age we have ever seen. And this year, averaging 32 2.7 points, 8.7 rebounds, and 8.1 assists per game. Luka is certainly on pace to get his fourth first team all NBA appearance, except there is one problem. He might miss out on that award because in a crowded field, voters might not want to vote for a man who is missing the playoffs. We have watched as the clear greatest young player of this generation suffer through a season that could only be described as a nightmare because of one of two things. You could either blame the Dallas Mavericks, the horrible franchise that has made mistake after mistake, or you can blame Luka Doncic and his on-court actions. By the way, guys, I am very excited to announce that I now have a radio show on Amazon Amp. Download Amazon Amp and follow me on my profile because every single day, Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I am going live for at least one hour. And in that hour, you are able to call in and talk to me about anything basketball related. I'm definitely going to have a topic in mind going in. For instance, right now we are talking Luka and Kyrie, guess what? On Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, you have the chance to tell me anything you want about this situation. Again, guys, my own show it would be awesome, awesome if you could show support and go follow me and download Amazon Amp. Thank you. And for now, let's get back to the video. Looking at what the Dallas Mavericks have done for Luka, for some reason, Chris Ups, Porzingis, and Luka could never seem to get it right on the court, but never said a bad word about each other. They were very professional about the situation. And once Dallas traded away KP and did not get enough trade value back in Turn. Porzingis has now emerged in Washington this season, averaging 23 points and 8.4 rebounds per game. At the time, Luka was blamed in part because of the fit. But we also know that after an incredible playoff run where the Mavericks took down the Phoenix Suns and reached the Western Conference Finals just last season, they chose to let their second best player, Jalen Brunson, walk away despite knowing him the best out of everyone. It was the Mavericks who saw Jalen Brunson practice each 
each and every day, and they saw him raise his stats in the playoffs. Remember, he was a national champion at Villanova. And last year in the playoffs, Brunson averaged 21.6 points per game in 18 playoff games, more than five more points per game than his regular season average. This season, Brunson has been the media darling, the surprise of the free agent class, as he has averaged 24 points per game on the fifth seeded Knicks, proving that when Dallas gives up on you, you can even bring back basketball to New York City. And now we have Kyrie Irving, a pairing that we all very nervously said we were excited for if the two were able to make it work. And now after the losses have piled up, how can anyone possibly say that this has worked? But then we do have to take into account the leadership and actions of Luka Doncic. At the end of the day, this is his fifth season. This is his franchise. It is on him to set an example. If the best player is out there working the hardest and is not complaining, is out there grinding, every single other player on the that court feels the pressure to do the same. It really is that simple. But at the end of the day, we cannot ignore the tremendous mistakes that the Dallas Mavericks front office continue to make. If you were Luka Doncic, would you not be incredibly frustrated playing with a group of 30 year olds while the Oklahoma City Thunder somehow built a young roster seemingly overnight? And that is just one example of a young team that has a much brighter future. If you were to remove the name Luka Doncic from the Dallas Mavericks, Mavericks roster. The stakes here are huge. If Luka were to request a trade, the NBA as a whole going forward would drastically, drastically change. And I think we really are on the verge of something like that happening because I go back into NBA history to look at just how rare this was. How rare is it for a fifth year young superstar to suddenly play on a team that is barely making the playoffs or misses the playoffs. And after doing as much digging as possible, I have to say that this is not normal in any way. Luca's progression before this was very normal. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, it would be awesome if you could subscribe and turn on post notifications. We are on the grind to 2 million subscribers here. Thank you. And now let's get back into the video. But if we were to take a look at a list of every single young top player the league has ever seen, Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Tim Duncan, Shaq, Bird, Magic, the list goes on and on here. Once the success starts to roll in, unless you have an injury year like Kevin Durant in 2015, you generally continue to just have success at the highest level. The reason for that is that all of these players had great teams around them. None of them had a roster anywhere close to the level of the roster that Luka is working with. And this is year five. The Mavericks have no excuses here. I know a lot of people are pointing at Luka Doncic and the way he is conducting himself on the court. The thing is though, for the Slovenia national team, we have heard nothing but Luka is the greatest leader ever. And it's also at this point where I really want to slow down for a second and just say we we have to remember that because Luca has been so amazing, it's easy to forget that this is just his fifth year. And to be honest, if I was this absurdly amazing at the game of basketball, I'm just going to say it. I would be very frustrated as the losses piled up while I was playing on a roster of again, mostly 30 year olds. If we take a look at Luca's on court production here, what we find is in year five, he's averaging 32.7 points per game, 8.7 rebounds and 8.1 assists. That is with a true shooting percentage above 61%. Despite these numbers, the Mavericks are on the verge of missing the playoffs. And let's look at this roster on basketball reference. Kyrie, 30. Hardaway Jr., 30. Bullock, 31. Powell, 31. Christian Wood, a spry 27. I mean, Luka Doncic is a human being. And the fact that he has been this restrained with this roster that has been given to him, with his level of talent, that, in my opinion, is impressive. If this season is not a learning season, if next year we see no growth and Luka is still out here complaining exactly the same to the refs, then sure, I personally will move more over to that type of criticism. But right now, Luka Doncic is one of the best young talents basketball has ever seen, and he is also on a roster that is not winning and also does not have any type of future. Duncan, Magic, Shaq, Bird, Jordan, Katie, 
Steph, they all had Hall of Fame teammates as they were growing in the league. LeBron is known for carrying a cast of bad players during his younger seasons. But let's take a look at his roster compared to Luka's team. As you could see in his fifth season, LeBron's roster was younger and most importantly, LeBron had an older all-star that he played with for his entire young career. Zadrunas Ilgauskas played center for LeBron for his first seven seasons. And in that time, Cleveland rotated in several great complementary pieces that fit what LeBron needed. They got him shooting around him and they also got him veteran talent. For instance, LeBron's earlier teams had a lot of young players, and Larry Hughes was a dependable veteran star who was a former 22 point per game scorer and the second leading scorer in the regular season for the Cavs during their 2007 team, the same Cavs team that would go on to make the NBA Finals. So at the end of the day here, I think we can all agree that Luka does have things he can correct on the court. There's no questioning that. He shouldn't be letting his emotions get to him in this way. It doesn't help any. Luka has to be the leader of his team and franchise. He cannot be among the leaders in technical fouls. It's that simple. That is generally the case with every young player though. Every young player has something they need to fix, but at least individually for Luka, there is hope. And we could find that in the form of a 26 year old Kobe Bryant, which is why I want to bring up the often forgotten 2005 Lakers, a team that won just 34 games despite Kobe Bryant playing in 66 of them. That was Kobe in his absolute prime. That was Kobe the year after Shaq left when he had everything to prove. And the media gave Kobe a bit of a pass because Shaq did leave. But is that really an excuse when you're talking about an all-time great? Your star teammate left and you couldn't step up enough to get to the playoffs? We unfortunately saw with Russell Westbrook that in 2015 when Kevin Durant went down with the Thunder and the Thunder ended up missing the playoffs, Russ proved that he was not able to carry the team by himself. And that showed for the rest of his career. On the other hand, Kobe Bryant took this 2005 season upon himself. He grew up as a man and realized that he was being way too much of a horrible person to his teammates. That's what he himself has said. And Kobe locked in and learned to become a leader after a nightmare of a year that saw the Lakers miss the playoffs in the first season where he was finally supposed to prove to everyone that he could do it without Shaq. So will the Mavericks figure this out? We will see. What I am confident about is that Luka will figure this out, whether that is on the Dallas Mavericks or not. That is anyone's guess at this point because it does feel like frustrations are reaching an all time high. So there we have it guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new and you like today's video, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss another one. And also we're on that road to 2 million subscribers. It'd be really cool if you could be a part. As for Luka himself, I am very curious what you guys think. Again though, I will be talking about this entire situation on Amazon Amp at 2 p.m. Eastern on Monday. So make sure to go follow me on Amazon Amp. Check in at 2 p.m. Eastern because you can call in. You can go and give your thoughts to me. It's going to be a great time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video again. Thank you for supporting. If you're already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.